So we're nearly at the end of the road to the 2030 World Cup. Can we make it over the finish line? Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Dodger Gamer here, International Memory of Mystery, bringing you episode 17 of our Cayman Island Adventure, New Gen Nation, International Memory of Mystery. Meet together as we try to turn Cayman Islands into a force in world football. Well, we had our first setback in that mission in the last episode when we bombed out of the Gold Cup. The previous two versions of the Gold Cup, we'd made the quarterfinals. We were hoping to match that or maybe even go one better this time, but we were eliminated in the group stage. Big shock, big disappointment, failing to win a single game. Of course, um, Granada and Mexico got out of our group. Granada would not go any further, losing to USA 3-0 in the quarterfinals. Mexico would go all the way, beating Curaçao, Jamaica, and then USA on their way to the title. Yeah, big disappointment for us, but we've got to forget about that now and focus on the World Cup. So we've had two matches since that Gold Cup disappointment, and they've both been World Cup qualifiers. First, we travelled to Havana back in September, and we picked up a 3-0 win. Very big result. Carson Solomon and Klein Williams with the goals on that day. That put us in a really strong position. Mini setback in that we went to Jamaica, uh, we travelled to Kingston, and we lost. Um, hardly a shock result, of course. This would be our toughest game of the entire qualifying campaign, Jamaica away. 4-2 defeat. I mean, perhaps the match was a bit closer than the scoreline suggests, but... They just got that quality up front, Sterling and Beckford. I mean, not Raheem Sterling and Jermaine Beckford, but Kaziah Sterling and Deshani Beckford, but still very good. Carson Solomon and Klein Williams again with our goals, but that puts us in a decent position. So two games left, Cuba and Curaçao, both at home. So that gives us an advantage. And if you look at the table, we're currently sitting in that second place in the group, which will give automatic direct qualification to the World Cup. So this is the situation. Today we play Cuba, whipping boys of the group so far. Now we're not going to take anything for granted, not after the Gold Cup, but if we can beat them, obviously we go on to 10 points. Then the other game, of course, Jamaica Curacao. Jamaica will be favourites for that. If Jamaica win, that will open up a nice gap over Curacao. Then we got Curacao in the last game, and then, you know, a point would be enough um, in fact, one thing to bear in mind here, sorting rules in the group, it's goal difference first, and then goal scored, and then results between the two teams. So if we can put a few past Cuba, and Jamaica can put a few past Curacao, that would pretty much guarantee it. Anyway, on to the game. There is a little bit of news for us, though, that's, that had an effect on us in the Gold Cup, and I'm hoping it doesn't have a bad effect again. Emerson Skeet, our superstar, our global superstar, is... Suspended for this one, uh, he picked up a yellow card in the cur um, in the Jamaica game. Sorry, so we're going to miss him. I mean, we missed him through injury against Martinique and Granada in the Gold Cup, and we couldn't win. So that's a little bit of a concern. Also, the left back Cupid is similarly suspended. So we're going with Ribeiro um, in goal, Wilson and Woodroach. As a centre back pairing, Thomas and Challenger Sanchez in the full back positions. So Lindo Wilson, and we normally use in the attacking midfield role, he's going to drop back uh, and try to fill the gap left by Skeet. Moxham Elliott's there though. Klein Williams and Solomon on the wings. Coleman in the centre. Rig up front. Again, Cuba going with a 4 3 3. No one out in the wide position, so we'll be looking to exploit some space there. OK, let's pile on the misery today. We said Cuba lost four out of five games. Pile on the misery. That's motivated most of them. Let's get out there and do this thing. All right, the teams come out, line up. They're ready to start the game. And so are we. We start with a highlight pretty early on. We've got the throw in. So Solomon charges forward, cuts inside. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what we needed to start the game. Solomon drives one in, not even two minutes on the clock, and we're 1-0 up and well on our way. Beautiful play by Solomon, just turns the defender inside out. The keeper probably should have stopped it, but he didn't. So 
1-0 up. Fantastic start. Okay, again a throw in. On this right-hand side, it comes again to Solomon, but this time he plays it back. But he receives it, and he scored a second goal. Neville Coleman with the assist. That is just fantastic play. Right winger as well, don't forget. He's not a striker. I mean, he can play as a striker, but that's not his role here. But look, Coleman, beautiful through ball. Solomon just, you know, lost his man completely in between the two defenders. 2-0, and we don't even have 10 minutes on the clock. Free kick now. Solomon taking it this time. Wood Roach, but he's offside. He ghosted in at the back post, but obviously made his run just a fraction. Ooh, marginal. Fraction too early. Good effort, boys. Okay, another throw in. Are we going to get another goal here? It's Solomon again. Again, he's just... Ooh, he got a bit too cocky there, I think. He was just going forward, but took a shot from range when he probably... Should have run forward a bit more. Okay, throw in from the left this time. Moxham Elliott knocks it forward to rig, but it's dealt with by the keeper. I just got a warning from my assistant manager that Cuba have set themselves up in a more attacking formation or more attacking approach, but that suits us. We'll just sit back, soak up the pressure, and use our quality to pick holes in their defence. And here comes Coleman looking for one of those holes now into rig. The keeper, though, bizarrely positioned himself. Anyway, another throw in. Challenger Sanchez knocks it out to Coleman. Well, he throws it to Coleman. And now he knocks it into the box. Solomon nearly completes his hat-trick. There's still time, though. OK, time for one more highlight as we get news from Kingston that Jamaica are 2-0 up against Curaçao. Solomon going for the hat-trick. It, it's not there yet. It's not coming today. But now there's a free kick. Coleman's going to take this one. He curls it over the wall, but too close to the keeper. And I think we're going to finish this half with the scoreline remaining at 2-0, as it was after nine minutes. But, well, maybe the boys are going to prove me wrong here. Lindo Wilson to Solomon. Oof, he definitely should have completed his hat-trick there. So 2-0 it is. We've dominated. And you know, Jamaica now 3-0 up. Beckford completing his hat-trick in stoppage time. So everything so far is going our way. We've just got to make sure it stays that way. Don't get complacent, guys. Carson Solomon, don't get confused. I'm very happy with your performance. I'm just telling the team not to get complacent. Don't look stressed, man. You can improve. I've got faith in you. Right, here comes Wood Roach with the ball. Plays it out to Moxham Elliott, to Linda Wilson... Oh, he should have shot. He had the space opened up in front of him. Solomon was calling for it. Let me have my hat-trick, he was saying. Yeah, Coleman, you should have just followed your instincts and twatted that one in. Right, a couple of substitutions at this point. I'm going to bring on Davy Banks. He's played for us before. One cap, one goal for the Ajax youngster. We'll put him as a poacher, as that's his preferred role. And I'm going to bring on E. Banks Moxham. He's 17 years old. Feyenoord left back. He's going to make his debut so we can tie him down to Cayman Islands for life. Well, we've come up to the final 10 minutes with no further highlights. I'm just going to put on Anthony Robinson, though, as Solomon has unfortunately picked up a knock. Let's just have a look what that is. Potential groin injury. Hopefully that doesn't keep him out. Hopefully it's just a little tweak. Doesn't keep him out for the Curacao game. OK, here we go with something for Cuba, but it's caught by... Ribeiro, we're into stoppage time now. Can can we get that third goal that's eluded us so far? I mean, we should have scored a couple more here, which really would have you know put us in a strong position going into that final game. But let's see, maybe we can add a third here. Moxham Elliott with the pile driver, but it goes just over. A lot of the players are looking complacent now, which we never like to see. We'll hit the praise button because that usually seems to shake them out of that complacency. For a few moments at least. Here comes Thomas. Lindo Wilson. Thomas again. Whips one in. And yes, Klein Williams. But no, he's offside. Second time we've had a goal ruled out in this match for offside. But maybe there's still time for one more. Williams coming forward. Taking his time. Gets hacked down. Could that be a red card? No. No, it looked like a tackle from behind to me. But the 
resulting free kick gives us nothing. We've dominated this game, but... Oh, they're giving us a replay of that offside. Very, very marginal, I have to say. Well, in the end, it's um, it's kind of academic. We've won. Uh, we've got the result we needed. We probably should have won by a larger scoreline. Um, I just, just want to say, don't let it go to your heads. A couple of them are confused, but... I know best. Jamaica in the end, 4-0. They got that extra goal against Curaçao. So that means, if we go and have a look at the table, that we are now three points clear of Curaçao. But crucially, there is a massive gap in goal difference. We're plus four, they're minus four. So even if they were to beat us like 3-0 in the next match, we'd still be ahead of them on goal difference. Obviously, if they would beat us 4-0, that would be a different matter. Okay, final match day of World Cup qualifying. We're on the brink. We're on the brink. A point is going to be enough to guarantee it. Uh, even a narrow defeat will get us through. We're within touching distance of the World Cup. Remember when I did this as an AI experiment? The AI did qualify for the 2030 World Cup, so we've got to do that, basically, just to match them. They were eliminated in the group stage there, so you know we'll see what draw we get, if we get there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, the good news is, Cupid and Skeet are back available for selection. Again, no further suspensions picked up. Samson, uh, Solomon, sorry, not Samson, Solomon picked up uh, an injury in that game, of course. He's fit again, uh, he's recovered, but his condition's a bit low, so we're going to put Whitelock in there as well and we're playing Robinson on the left. Those are the main changes. Let's get out there and show Curacao what we're made of. All right, they're going for a 3-4-3 formation. Interesting. They've got one kind of big-name player um, of, of a sort here. Juninho Bakuna plays in, I think, the United Arab Emirates for one of the teams there. Has a value of about three and a half million pounds, but apart from that, no real superstars in their team, so hopefully, as we've got Skeet, um, we can we can do something. Uh, speaking of Skeet, in the game against Jamaica, that was his 75th cap for the Cayman Islands, so you know he's featured heavily right from the beginning, right from back when he was a fresh-faced 16-year-old, and hopefully he's going to lead us to the World Cup. Anyway, early chance for a goal here, Whitelock. And Rig, who was kind of anonymous in the last game, he gets us that early goal, five minutes on the clock, and we're 1-0 up. Whoa, good stuff. I mean, Sanchez just completely unmarked. Obviously, they're playing a back three. No wing backs, no full backs, so plenty of space once he'd broken past the midfield line. Rig with the tap in. Free kick now for Curacao as they look for a way back into this game. They knock it in deep. But we clear, and Skeet has picked it up. Skeet is skating through their defence. Coleman picks it up. Oh, and that is a beautiful placed shot from outside the area. Nice and low, right into the corner. Coleman, beautiful assist by Skeet, you've got to say. Absolutely fantastic. Pick that up from defence. Ran it all the way into their half. And then Coleman just picked out his spot. So where was this team in the Gold Cup? That's what I want to know. Right, free kick for us. In our own half. Nice little interplay there. And then the ball out to Robinson. And Robinson, I think that's his first goal for the Cayman Islands. Indeed, it is for the young Manchester United winger coming in off the left. Fantastic. Fantastic interplay there. Skeet again with the vision and the accuracy to hit a pass like that. Anthony Robertson. Lovely bit of control. And he puts it beyond doubt. One thing I would say as well, we're currently still ranked in the 80s. We're about 86 in the world. Curacao, I checked them before the game. 65th, so they're 20 places above us in the world rankings. So this is a pretty big deal. Right, 3-0 up at half time. We are, you know, we've got one foot in that World Cup group stage draw already. So um, I'm going to say I'm very happy. Keep it up, lads. There's no need to say 
don't get too complacent. I don't see a way back into this game for Curacao. Certainly don't see them scoring seven goals, which is what they would need to do to overtake us in this group. But you never know, stranger things have happened, as they do have too much space here. And oh my god, they've scored with 23 seconds of this half on the clock. <laughs> they've obviously been given a rather major bollocking by their manager at half time. And, you know, that's the result of it. Okay, quick break for us here. Whitelock got the chance here. Oh, he's restored the three goal lead. Beautiful play. Um, I thought nothing was going to come off that highlight. It was a clearance from the goalkeeper. Uh, you'll see it from here. Clear goal kick. Rig just gets on it. And then Whitelock just does the job from there. Nice. Throw in for us then. So effective against Cuba were those throw ins. Cupid with it. Is he going to hit the cross here from deep as he's supposed to? He did, but no one was able to pick it up. Skeet though steals it to Rig, to Whitelock. Oh, and Skeet gets a deserved goal. It's 5 1. On this occasion, we've done what we couldn't do at the Gold Cup. We've delivered when it matters. This was a game that we were, I was worried if we hadn't got. I mean, okay, we were in a strong position coming into the game, but I did think, you know, Curacao could easily beat us on their day, but we've approached this professionally, even though we were in a strong position and likely to qualify whatever happened, we've still gone out and stuck it to them with five goals. Right, a couple of substitutions to make them. We'll bring on Fagan and Ebanks, mainly because Rig and Anthony Robertson kind of run themselves into the ground a bit. Um, a little bit later, I think I'll take off Wood Roach as he's pretty tired and he's on a yellow. We don't want him picking up any kind of red card that's going to leave him suspended for the World Cup now, do we? Ian Williams recently made his debut in um, the first game against Cuba, which was off camera. Young 19 year old currently um, playing in the Israeli league, having come through at Maccabi Haifa. Um, was it Maccabi Haifa or Maccabi Tel Aviv? I, I need to stay on top of that, really. Anyway, it's uh, in stoppage time now. One last highlight, and then that referee is going to blow his whistle and send us to the World Cup. Skeet wins the ball again. Beautiful play through to Ebanks. What's Ebanks going to do? He's holding it up. He's waiting for his teammates to catch up with him, and then he shoots. Like, wh why would you do that? But anyway, that doesn't matter. 5-1. Winners, we have just qualified for the World Cup. We're putting that Gold Cup disappointment firmly behind us. We are in the World Cup, ladies and gentlemen. I think that deserves a like and a subscribe if you haven't done so already. Yes, there we go. Confirmation. Cayman Arms have qualified for the 2030 World Cup first ever qualification. The Football Association are delighted that we made it through and they're confident I'll oh, meet their expectations at the World Cup. Well, we'll check out what those are in a minute. Okay, so World Cup, there's no expectation there. Not yet. Uh, World Cup qualifying, their expectation was to be competitive. We qualified and I got 68%. So let's have a look at all the groups and see who made it through. So... Mexico and Canada qualify from Group A. Honduras don't make it. USA with Trinidad and Tobago from Group B. Costa Rica into the playoff, the Intercontinental Playoff. Jamaica and Cayman Islands from Group C. Curacao had a strong performance, but in the end, those two thrashings they got in those final two games against us and Jamaica meant they were nowhere near Costa Rica's goal difference. And they're done. Well, that was a fantastic World Cup qualifying run. We started right back at the beginning, at the very earliest time we could have entered with that 16-0 aggregate win over Bahamas. Then we ground out that 1-0 win over Dominican Republic. We managed to beat Jamaica at home in that opening game. We featured that on the channel, of course. Crucial result, as was the 1-1 away at Curaçao. Also a crucial result. A victory against Cuba, just the one defeat then on the road to the World Cup against Jamaica, but we won against Cuba and Curaçao. Well, bring it on. So in a couple of months, the group stage draw will be made. It's going to be hosted by Italy. England are the holders. Let's have a look 
who else has qualified so far? Obviously, Italy as host. Th these are the names we find ourselves among at this point. Brazil and Argentina, of course, they're there. South Korea and Japan are there, of course. Mexico are there. We've got Chile, Uruguay, Colombia. We've got some of the best African teams there as well. Germany and, oh, France and Spain. And then the tiny Cayman Islands. So there we go. We've done it. We've made it to the World Cup. Do keep an eye on Twitter. I'm uh, at Dodgy Gamer on Twitter. I will reveal our group for the World Cup on there sometime after you've had a chance to watch this episode. And the next episode is going to be Cayman Islands at the World Cup. How do you rate our chances? Drop me a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer, International Man of the Mystery, and we'll see you in Italy for the World